All right, good afternoon, everybody. So I want to continue a little bit uh, with our exposition of the Psalms, and particularly these two Psalms that are connected intimately to the holiday of Hanukkah and that the Arizal, Rabbi Isaac Luria, the great Kabbalistic master, the great master of Jewish mysticism, taught to recite these two Psalms before our morning prayers every morning. And I believe that the, the, the uh, Hasidic masters teach, and I find this, that these two Psalms are designed to bring the light of Hanukkah throughout the year, that uh, symbol and that archetype of Hanukkah being a holiday of light in a dark season, in a cold, dark season when the nights are very long, representing how God's mercy and love continues even when his face is hidden, as we discussed in our exposition of Psalm 30. And you should watch that video before this one. These two go in order. As we make an exposition of Psalm 67, we note, as we said in our introduction to our exposition on Psalm 30, that this psalm is known in the Kabbalistic, in the mystical circles, as the Tzura Samanora, the shape, the form, the picture of the menorah. The way that that's done is that the first verse, which is the title, Abnatseach, is kind of across the top as the lights of the menorah, more or less. And then GPS signal lost. The way that it's formed is that each verse comes down as the branches of the menorah. Feet, slight right onto US 6 East Long Mountain Parkway. That we slight have. right onto US 6 East Long Mountain Parkway. So you have verse 2. Continue would, on US 6 East for three miles. Verse 2 would be the first branch. Verse 3 would be the second branch. You know, verse 2 would be the outermost branch. And then the verse 3 would be the next branch. Verse 4 would be the next branch. And verse 5 would be the middle column of the menorah. And then verse 6, 7, 8, again, branching out of the menorah. So, uh, it, it and because it, it makes it, the length of the verses are such that the second verse and the eighth verse are the same length, and they're both long, and then the relative to the next verses we'll, we're going to discuss, the third and the seventh verses are more or less medium size. And the fourth and the sixth verse are rather small, and they're pretty similar, these verses. And then that middle verse, the fifth verse, is longer than all the other verses, making the, more or less, the, uh, the base and the middle branch of the menorah, more or less. Um, if you, know, yeah, I'm sure all of you are familiar with the menorah looks like, and so this is the seven branch menorah, like there was in the temple, which was only allowed to be in the temple or the tabernacle, it was not allowed to be used for any other purpose. That's why a Hanukkah menorah has uh, nine branches, in addition to the fact that there's eight candles. But we're not allowed to make a seven branch menorah for our own personal use, even in the synagogue, uh, according to Jewish law because we're not allowed to copy anything that's in the temple, just like you can't take the 11 spices of the incense uh, that was used in the temple and copy that uh, formula and use the same formula to make, a, uh, to make incense and other similar things that whatever, there was the, the lechem upon him, the showbread is not allowed to be uh, the same shape we're not allowed to make bread in the same shape as the show bread, etc., etc. So in any event, so this psalm, Rav Shamshin before Al Hirsch points out something very beautiful. And it's based on what the earlier Mepharshim already to the Rishonim say about this psalm. And I believe uh, that this psalm is emblematic of Hanukkah because it's attached, again, to this lesson of hope I mean, again, the light in the dark, in the cold, dark window. In half a mile, at Long Mountain Circle, take the second exit onto the South Palisades Interstate Parkway ramp to New York. In the exile, this message of the 
menorah of this light that goes out again in the temple the uh, windows bowed out because the light that was in the temple had to go out meaning representing the light of the Torah that has to go out to the world and so this is a message of hope that is emblematic of more than just our own personal situation which is more of what Psalm 30 was emblematic of this personal issue of getting through dark times in life. Exit difficult, the traffic circle onto the ramp. Difficult times in life. That was what Psalm 30. In half a mile, merge onto Palisades Interstate Parkway South. That's what Psalm 30 was teaching us. This Psalm, Psalm 67, is a message of the potential of history because, again, Psalm 30 was telling us about hope. And so this Psalm 67 is really the great hope, the universal message of the Torah, the light of the Torah, which is what the light of Hanukkah represents, the light of religion that can spread through the world and influence the whole world to be a better world. And really, in a certain sense, has done so. If we really want to be honest with ourselves and study history, and see how much better the world is today than it's ever been in history. And really how much better the world has been since the message of the Torah has become more universal. And since the world has turned away from paganism to the Abrahamic religions of Christianity and Islam. That these two world religions, as much as the Jews, we personally, our people have suffered at the hands of people who claim to be practitioners of these two great faiths, the truth is, is that these two faiths have indeed made the world a better place. And so this America that we live in, uh, you know, we can be thankful because of the, the Christian men and women, and there were Jewish men and women involved as well, but uh, it was the, the Christians who founded this country who made it possible not just for we as Jews to be able to live as Jews, but for really the whole world to become a much better place. The influence of the, the much more pure form that exists in America because of the freedoms that we have here, uh, the puritanical, in a sense, form. Uh, in a positive way has made this country a better place and all of that is in a certain sense a fulfillment of that which this psalm is predicting that the light of God will shine through the whole world that it started with our people with the Jewish people with our religion but went out to shine through the whole world and eventually you know now it's in an imperfect form in these two faiths of Christianity and Islam. But eventually, when the true Messiah comes, there will be a pure form. Um, so now, you know, more or less we're settling for less than perfect in the current world that we live in, uh, but still much better than it was in, in the pagan past and to the point where essentially the... Uh, Half a mile. Keep left to stay on Palisades Interstate Parkway South. They're essentially, uh, even the pagan world is a much better place now, uh, thanks to the influences of Christianity and Islam on the world, both of which bringing the basic messages of Torah of human keep left to stay on Palisades Interstate Parkway South of human rights, of the value of life, of the right to life of the value of the individual being made in the image of God, these ideas have spread through the world even to people who practice other religions and uh, pagan forms of worship have given up a lot of their murderous ways. They've given up their a lot of their human sacrifice traditions and so forth that existed in the past, uh, largely due to the 
uh, religious influence of the ideals of Judaism that were brought into the world through our, let's say, little sisters of uh, Christianity and Islam. So, but let's um, let's uh, go through In half this a mile, psalm. Keep left to stay on Palisades Interstate Parkway South. And see how this message of hope will get us through the darkness of exile. Because, like we said, we if we have the hope of the coming of the true Messiah, and not just the idea of the person of the Messiah himself, but how the world will be transformed and transfigurated. That, as Isaiah Keep says, left to stay on Palisades, Interstate Parkway South. There'll be a new heaven and a new earth. As Isaiah says, that the earth will be covered with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the seas. This hope, this message, will get us through this bitter and dark exile that the same people maybe who are uh, causing pain and suffering to us uh, during this temporary time will be united with us in the future recognizing that we're all worshiping the same God and that God wants a world of peace and love and harmony uh, and that the, this light of Torah not peace, love, and harmony with those who do wicked, but peace, love, and harmony in that we will all repent and turn to God and live in a good, positive, moral, and ethical, monotheistic world. And so here, let's go through the psalm. Again, we'll try to recite it with the proper chant and the cantillation, uh, which uh, is widely unknown in the world, but I was able to learn it before uh, there was, it used to be on the internet on the keynor.net and somehow uh, it's no longer there at this time but uh, maybe it'll be published again where you can buy it certainly those uh, programs but let's uh, let's read this psalm now lam not say yeah again more sheer so the word lam not say is usually translated as for the choir master um, and of course it's related to the word netzach netzachon which means victory so it's also a, a song of victory and a song of each and also the word netzach means eternity something that's lasting um, so also for the eternal victory we could say and of course it's one of the sephiros for the for those who know Kabbalah a little, little bit, so it's connected to that. Any way, uh, not Seach. So for the that's the tile for the choir master on the Niginos, which is a type of musical instrument. Nigina is music. Mizmor. In half a mile, keep left to stay on Palisades Interstate Parkway South. Again, a psalm, a sheer, a song. So Mizmor. Sheer means again, so it's meaning that it's accompanied both by musical instruments and by vocal song. Hello, keep e left to stay on Palisades Interstate Parkway South. So, God, you had grace Continue upon on us. Continue on Palisades Interstate Parkway South for one mile, and you blessed us. You shined your face with us, Sela. Sela is, in a certain sense, a musical word, but also means forever. Uh, but it's also marking the end of. In half a mile, take exit 12 toward New Hempstead, Spring Valley. Of a verse. And so we have this verse here, Rav Hirsch, Rav Shamsha Paul Hirsch, of Frankfurt, explained that. In this psalm, each time it says Selo, it's uh, demarcating a different... Take exit 12, then keep right at the fork. ...part of history. So the first part of history is where God's light and blessing and grace shined only with us, with, with the Israelites. But there was a purpose in that. It wasn't just that we should be parochially uh, caring for keep us. Keep right at the fork. 
But the purpose in the choosing of Israel, and by mean not the country that calls itself Israel, but meaning what we would colloquially call the Klal Yisrael, the Jewish people today, the Das Ba'aretz Darkecha B'chol Goyim Yeshua Asecha. To Merge know, onto New York 45 South, then turn left. To know on the earth your ways among all the nations, your salvation. Turn left, then turn right. So meaning, and, and that could even be connected to, uh, you know, in a certain sense. Turn right, then turn left. The interpretations that other religions have had with these words that, you know, they have these connections in, in, this, uh, in this sense. Yarducha Amim Elohim Yarducha Amim Kulam. Your destination is on the right. May they, may the nations laud you, God. May they laud you, all the nations, all the peoples. And now we get to the center of the menorah. Yismechu v'ranenu le'umim kisishpoit amim mishor ul'umim. Rejoice and sing, you nations, because he comes to judge the peoples justly and righteously. And by judge we mean in the sense of not passing judgment, but ruling as a just uh, democratic ruler. And I don't mean the Democratic Party, but in a... In a uh, really more a Republican ruler, uh, really is what a, a shofet is, in the sense of the shoftim as opposed to a monarch. And again, a meaning, so this is really talking about this part of, the, of history, where you have the other nations recognizing God uh, through their other religions that branched away from Judaism. And then now we come to the ultimate level of Yeducha Amim Elohim, Yeducha Amim Kulam. Once again, praise you nations, O God, praise you all the nations. Eretz no sna yivulah yivarcheinu Elohim Eloheinu. The earth has given its produce, meaning the harvest time has come. Bless us, O God, our God. Meaning that the earth has given its its uh, produce, its uh, the harvest time has come that even these other nations will now come to the harvest to be the choice fruits of God and blessings will come on us. Bless us, God, and may all of the nations fear you. And the word fear really means to recognize you, to see you, to be aware of you and be in awe of you. All the ends of the earth. Meaning that the whole world is uh, going to recognize God in a pure uh, and true way. So that's uh, so. This hope of this future is what uh, is what will get us through the exile. That recognizing that a day will come when the whole world will come together in worship of the one true God. God bless. Please like, share, and subscribe. Comment. We'll see you later.